At the end of 1917, when Rudolf Steiner was formulating his idea of the threefold nature of the human organism as body, soul, and spirit, he gave a series of lectures in Dornach, Switzerland. It was a time of upheaval in Europe, the outbreak of the Russian Revolution, and the fourth year of World War I. These lectures were published as a book called The Fall of the Spirits of Darkness. In these talks, Steiner grappled with the issue of the underlying causes of the catastrophe that would reshape the world for years to come. It continues to plague humans in the present world and fuels their capacity to create division, conflict, and war. Steiner's main thesis is that humanity in general is asleep to the fact that fallen spirits cast from the spiritual worlds have become intensely active on earth. This manifested mainly in human thinking and perception of the surrounding world. However, humans have within them the ability to go inward and get in touch with their own spiritual nature. The question is, why aren't they doing so? In his lectures, Steiner places great emphasis upon a question that plagued him all his life, even as a child. Why are people so caught up in the physical world? They put most of their energy into achieving material knowledge and all that goes with it, especially the enriching of themselves with material goods. This, he said, led to the destruction which results from conflict and war. It is as if humans exist in a state of sleep and are oblivious to anything else. They are unable to see the connections between the physical world and the other spheres of the world. In spite of the fact that they are called every hour, even every minute, to wake up, there exists no science of the spirit. And because of this, the chaos continues. Steiner stresses that humans need to change the way they think, feel, and use their will if future wars and conflict are to be avoided. People have become more advanced intellectually as a result of the increased interest in science and materialism. However, morally, their development has not kept pace. One of the reasons scientists are so confused is because they see humans as consisting only of a physical body. Steiner sees the human as made up of much more than this. He states that different aspects of human nature belong to entirely different regions and spheres of the universe. Our generative powers relate only to the physical world, but we also possess an astral body and an ego with which we enter into a totally different realm every night in the world of sleep. Steiner has a very interesting perspective on the course human evolution has taken. This is how he explains it. Though individuals will gain in years, the opposite is true for humanity as a whole. Humanity was old to begin with and is getting younger and younger. During ancient Indian times, humanity as a whole remained capable of further development beyond the 50s. Today, we are only capable of developing in such a way in childhood and up to a certain time of our youth, for only then is our physical development directly connected with our development of soul and spirit and the two run parallel. This soon comes to an end, however. In ancient Indian times, development in soul and spirit continued to be dependent on physical development until well into the 50s. People went on developing the way a child develops, and this only came to an end when they were old men and women. During the Persian epoch, people were only able to develop into their 40s and early 50s, and during Egyptian and Chaldean times, only into their 40s. In Greco-Latin times, this went only as far as 35. This age continues to decline, and the result is the human race is getting younger and younger. At the beginning of our own era, the fifth post-Atlantean age, humanity was only able to develop up to the age of 28. They exhibited no further advancement or development beyond this. 
And today we have reached a point where people only reach the age of 27 if this is left to nature. If we continue like this, humanity will go down to 26, 25, 24, and then in the sixth post-Atlantean age to the 21st, and even all the way down later to the 14th year. In this lecture, Steiner ponders why people perpetually dream of creating the perfect society when the world on the physical plane can never reach perfection. This is part of the illusion. It is as if a veil has been pulled over the eyes of humanity as a whole. Steiner attributes this worldview to the fact that humans have become overly obsessed with life on the physical plane and material possessions. He thinks the veil is especially strong when it comes to the area of political ideology. He offers criticism for those whose illusions are colored by what he calls party politics, especially those like the socialists of his day who have constructed an ideal of the physical world and believe that paradise on earth can be created. They believe that all that is necessary for this to happen is to arrange things on the physical plane so that everybody can live the good life, which in their way of thinking is the same for everyone. Those who go against such a doctrine are considered to be evil-minded. However, Steiner points out that it is not evil-mindedness that stands in the way, but illusory thinking. It is a law of nature that there can never be perfection in the physical world, and people simply need to face this truth. In addition, those who say they believe in the world of the spirit but continue to think materialistically are only fooling themselves. The veil over their eyes remains in place. There are destructive powers at work in human society. Steiner says a mysterious connection exists between human consciousness and the destructive powers of decline and fall in the universe. In a lecture called The Elemental Spirits of Birth and Death, he tries to explain this concept. For a long time, many truths were kept secret in the hands of initiates. These secrets were guarded in the ancient mysteries, for it was believed that this knowledge could be dangerous in the hands of the profane. Eventually, these truths morphed into the esoteric religions or those that contained knowledge meant just for initiates exoteric religions were given to the masses of people who were kept in the dark about the true meanings behind the symbolism of esotericism. Steiner believed that the time had come for waking humans from their state of spiritual sleep. He acknowledges that previously the justification offered for keeping truth from humans was because it might elicit great fear within the masses. He argues, however, that the time to change had, to change this had come. And remember, he was giving this lecture in 1917, four years into World War I. The first step, he said, would be to introduce people to the non-physical world, which borders directly on the physical world. This is what humans will need to realize and understand if they are to regain their sight. In addition, they need to acknowledge that there are certain entities of a special nature which interact with humans and influence their behavior. One such class of entities is the group Steiner calls the elemental spirits of birth and death, which he said is connected with human birth and death. The initiates of the great mysteries believed it was their strict duty not to speak to the masses about these elemental spirits. Speaking of them might influence humanity to want to learn about them, and doing so in full consciousness might reveal that these beings have powers which could be used for destructive purposes. Steiner gives this example. We have to get used to the idea that the world is not made as people would really like it to be, and that there exists the element which in the Egyptian mysteries was known as the iron necessity. As part of this iron necessity, entities hostile to the physical world are used by the gods to bring about birth and death for human beings. Those people in this realm who are unable to control their instincts and drives and passions, had they known about these destructive powers of the entities, might have used that knowledge to gain power in the physical world, leading to destructive consequences. Therefore, the truth was kept hidden to protect the masses of ordinary people. 
The question becomes, should the truth now be revealed? And Steiner says that yes, it is time. His reasoning is that the participation of elemental spirits can also influence humans in a positive fashion. They are always involved and provide the prompts for humans to take the initiative in various fields of science, for example. Here's the example he gives. Modern people do, of course, believe that all of this, the telegraph, telephones, the steam engine, etc., all happens without the participation of spiritual entities. This is not the case, however. People are not taking the initiative on their own. They are guided. Therefore, this has been going on for some time now. The elemental spirits of birth and death, however, are serving technology, industry, and human commerce, and this disturbing truth must now enter our souls with all its power and intensity. The problem is, during the fourth period of the Atlantean Age, people began to use the elemental spirits, which had previously been used by the divine spirits, to govern the power and growth of human beings. When this took place, human beings gained control of certain divine powers and began using them in destructive ways. This led to the whole of Atlantean civilization being guided toward its own destruction, which then took place. Some remnants of the old civilization survived and were guided to other lands. In the post-Atlantean civilization, the work done by the gods will become the work done by humans. The issue is that the elemental spirits are now the enemies of human civilization and want to destroy it. Those who worship technology and the advances of science will not want to hear this message, according to Steiner. They will tout these revelations as great advances in society and try to convince the masses that this means the human species is evolving. However, Steiner says the opposite is true, and much will have to change about the way humans see the world if they are to progress. Most importantly, they will need to learn to live with inner impulses, which they still prefer to ignore today, because these go against the good life that they want. Part of changing the way humans think about the world is realizing that while creating ideal societies and a perfect world sound like really good concepts, they can never become reality. This is what Steiner says about this. The reality is there are no absolutes in this world. You work towards something that is good and the way of the world will turn it into something bad. We therefore must seek ever new ways, look for new forms over and over again. The swing of the pendulum governs all such human efforts. Humans must learn to live with the reality that the elemental spirits of birth and death will always be with us, trying to destroy what we build and create. They are messengers of Araman. On the other hand, these spirits must be relied upon in order that civilization may progress, but there is a dangerous element inherent in this. The spirits must be used cautiously, and people must act with a full understanding of what they are actually doing when they, in Steiner's words, open the devil's vault, to put it in his language. He says the harsh truth is that it is Araman who will be the bearer of our future civilization. That sums up what Steiner had to say in this lecture in 1917, and here's my commentary on it. All one needs to do is look around to at our own present society a hundred years later, and we can see the destructive powers at work. It's a scenario of divide and conquer, and this ancient strategy works now just as it did during the days of the fall of the Roman Empire. People are being driven apart, and they are arguing about minutia. The powers, while they are arguing about minutia, the powers that be are exercising our harmonic influence in the theaters of constant war, the surveillance state, genocide, and war crimes, and the masses do not seem to notice or pay attention. They are in a state of what hypnotists call cultural hypnosis or mass consensus trance, to use a term coined by Matthias Desmet, who recently penned a book called The Psychology of Totalitarianism. All of this talk of evil in the world is depressing, I know, but I believe strongly in the concept of apophatic learning, which in a nutshell ex is explained by learning by negation. In order to know something, I need to study its opposite. So I think in order to really know what is good, we must also study what is evil, no matter how disturbed we are by what we uncover. It's the only way to break free from mass consensus trance, which makes 
for only obedience and slavery. Steiner discusses how the spiritual constitution of humans today has changed and reminds the audience during this lecture that both the earth and humanity reached a kind of end point during the Atlantean age. The earth itself is no longer growing and in fact is starting to crumble. He points out that the earth has developed cracks and fissures and its crust is breaking up and shattering. The same type of decaying is true for the physical creatures that inhabit the earth due to the downward curve of evolution. Since the time of ancient Greece, it is evident that humanity is following the same path of downward spiral. During the time of ancient Greece, man's inner life was still in harmony with his physical development because the ancient Greeks had still a feeling, an inner feeling for the etheric in human form. Up until the time of ancient Greece, the living human body was, in Steiner's words, determined and maintained by the immediate environment. Human beings were intimately bound up with the space immediately surrounding them. And as a result of this, human bodies at the time were as perfect as they could be during their life on Earth. This changed at the beginning of the fifth post-Atlantean age, and Steiner predicts that it will not be until the epoch of Jupiter that humanity will once again achieve a higher level of physical perfection. For now, however, human physical evolution is part of a downward curve. We exist in bodies that are crumbling and withering away, to use Steiner's terms, and our purpose for incarnation here is in order to learn and experience all manner of things. What effect has this change had on our present human bodies? Here's Steiner's explanation. In the past, people were geniuses because their souls still had the power, through heredity or education, to send impulses to the physical body, which causes the intuitions, inspirations, and imaginations of a genius to arise unconsciously. The power of genius was available when the body was still in the ascendant. In the future, bodies will be in the descendant and the power will no longer be available. Anything resembling genius in the future will arise because the individuals that we may call geniuses see more deeply into the spiritual world which is all around them. Thus, the impulses will not come from their unconscious physical aspect, but out of a deeper insight into the world of spirit. The changing nature of genius provides an excellent demonstration of the break which has occurred between evolution as it was in the past and evolution as it will be in the future. Human beings today are superficial because the world around us is one of space and devoid of spiritual element. This is why the inner constitution of humans has changed. They are unable to reach their own inner being. Steiner comments that bodies are walking around and the soul is not entirely inside them. Over and over again, we have heard the saying, my kingdom is not of this world, but people seem unable to really grasp what this means. Steiner says we must be prepared to confront this issue if we are able to regain what we have lost and see ourselves as candidates for the age of Jupiter. Steiner also says that during the final stages of Earth evolution, humans will continue to be present on Earth, but they will do so without physical bodies. As this takes place, humans will be less and less able to develop their souls parallel to their bodies. He stresses the fact that it's imperative that humans become more and more inward because during the final epochs of Earth evolution, they will withdraw from the outer physical body. Because ideas will be coming from the spiritual world and not the natural world, humans will no longer depend on the inadequate political and social theories of the present age, where it is ideas from the natural world that take precedence. This will be a difficult concept for people of our present era to grasp. Steiner reminds his audience in this lecture that during Atlantean times, the blackest of black magic was practiced, and order was created by establishing classes of people and taking these matters out of human control. To quote him, this was one of the factors which led to the nations and races of today. The issue of the nation as an entity is coming up again in our present time. It is an echo of the soulless brain from Atlantean times, there is so much talk about national issues today, but it is only the body speaking. The spirit has withdrawn and already belongs to a totally different world today. 
All this must be made known because this will inevitably take us into chaos over and over again. Those rumblings in brains emptied of soul are the reason why ideas that human beings should be produced on the basis of certain laws are now coming up again. And so I think what he was talking about was the eugenics idea that was popular at the time that human beings should be produced according to certain characteristics and certain characteristics were more favorable than others. So he's telling us that those ideas came out of brains that were emptied of soul. To summarize, Steiner warns that as the human soul increasingly separates from the physical body, a danger exists that it will be filled with something else, something very dangerous. A powerful aramonic spirit could live within someone whose soul has withdrawn from the physical body. These dark spirits can work within the body. And the result will be humans will not be what they appear to be because the inner person will be buried deep inside. Church dogma decreed that the human being consisted of only a body and a soul and made it a heresy to speak of a human spirit. This took place at the Eighth Ecumenical Council at Constantinople in AD 869, which decreed that men were not to believe in the spirit. This was because the church did not desire that everybody should be enlightened about the mystery of Golgotha, but that it should be kept hidden. And in the year A.D. 869, belief in the spirit was abolished by the Catholic Church. The dogma then decreed was to the effect that men must not believe in man as spirit, but only as body and soul, the soul possessing certain spiritual qualities. Thus, the truth that man is a being of body, soul, and spirit was literally abolished by the Catholic Church. Steiner believes that in the same way in the future, attempts will be made to decree the soul, the inner life, as non-existent as well. He goes as far as to predict that the soul will be made non-existent with the aid of a drug that will be administered to people in the form of a vaccine. This vaccine will be administered to babies in order that their human body never even gets the idea that there is a soul and a spirit. Steiner says this will be put in motion, that this will put in motion two very different philosophies of life. In his words, one movement will need to reflect how concepts and ideas may be developed to meet the reality of soul and spirit. The other, the heirs of modern materialism, will look for the vaccine to make the body healthy, that is, make its constitution such that this body no longer talks of such rubbish as soul and spirit, but takes a sound view of the forces which live in engines and in chemistry. Materialistic physicians, Steiner says, will be asked to drive the souls out of humanity. In lecture number six, Steiner contemplates the nature of the human being and the role humans play in historical revolution. He evolution. He notes that humans have been given the power of the intellect, which means they are able to think about ideas. Humans are constantly surrounded by a world of thoughts. To use Steiner's words, thought substance. These thoughts make up what is called the elemental world. Entities that are part of the elemental world are made up of this thought substance. Steiner makes a distinction between this thought substance and the thoughts we humans have in our head, however. He says that the thoughts coming from the world we perceive with our senses and drag around with us when we are in waking consciousness are thought corpses, thoughts that have been killed. Outside of us, they are alive. The human head, he says, is much older than the rest of the body. The rest of the human body, shown here in his sketch, is a manifestation of the higher hierarchies from the spirits of form downwards. Everything that is labeled B on the sketch evolved from the time of Saturn and emerged against the background of the cosmic hierarchies. During this process of evolution, what Steiner calls Luciferic seduction was introduced, which led to the creation of the human body, and something very strange followed thereafter. Steiner reveals what he calls an important secret, to quote him, 
What has happened is that the human being has become the image of the gods in the very organs, which are normally called the organs of his lower nature. This image of the gods has been debased in human beings as they are on earth. The highest principle in human beings, the spiritual principle coming from the cosmos, has become their lower nature. Our lower nature, which is due to Lucifer's influence, was actually destined to be our higher nature. This is the contradictory element in human nature. Rightly understood, it will solve the countless riddles in the world and in life. And he says this was known to the leaders of the ancient mysteries. Humans believe their thoughts arise from reflecting. Steiner says this is not true because the human race is in the process of evolution. The thoughts that come to us from the elemental world are living thoughts, not abstract dead ones, and they come from the whole human being. On the other hand, humans fabricate the thoughts in their head. Steiner tells the audience that when a thought which marks a real change arises in world history, it is given by the gods and arises from the whole being as it overcomes the Luciferic influence and element. Humans are unaware that their thoughts are coming from the gods, however, because they hold only human thoughts, which Steiner calls the corpses of thoughts. Knowledge of this association with the gods must be made known to humans, Steiner says, if we are to build a bridge between human thoughts and the spiritual influences which come from the higher worlds. In the next video, I will summarize what Steiner had to say in lectures 7 through 14 of the Fall of the Spirits of Darkness series. See you next time. Thanks for watching and for your comments.